All right, guys, so welcome back. So I'm progressing on this guy here. You know, sometimes I start a project and I go to do something on it. And I think it's a good idea. And then when I'm like three quarters of the way through, I realize it isn't. But it's too late by then because I'm already well invested. I don't think this is, but the stand I was doing is. But now I have to put the other one on. And I have to do it in such a way where it has an equal space, which is kind of tricky because the magnets are in attraction mode. I should have put them in repulsive mode. It would have been a lot easier. Also, the um, the cones are 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 um, are hooked together, so it's a static setup where these two cones and the other two cones that are going to go here. These two are hooked together. That might not be a good idea. I might have to make them all separate, which I can do because there's two bearings inside here. I can just unscrew these, take this cap right off, and it would work. Because in my test, when I had the cone on here and I had it loosely on here with the stand, it worked. It shouldn't work because if you think about it, this is going down, which should make the, this one go this way. But this one's also going down, which should make it turn that way. So two of the cones are gearing and two of them are anti-gearing. But it, it seems to work. But again, I might have to, if I make these, um, if, I, if I make these spin independent of each other, of all four spin, this one will turn... This one will turn this way. This one will turn this way. This one will turn this way. So only two of them will end up being anti-gearing. Anyway, it's a lot of work right now. And I'm getting ready to screw in the second one. What I'm doing is I'm drilling holes. And then I'm taking these guys, inserts, heat inserts, bigger ones than that, obviously, and inserting it into the plastic piece. I've got an eighth inch of plastic on there. And it seems to hold it okay. I mean, it's in there. I got to make sure that these are nice and rigid. Because in my test, it was shaking all over the place. And the reason why this end is bigger than all the other ends, this end is going to have magnets all the way around it. So I can have a coil here and a coil here to spin this which will then in turn spin the whole thing. In theory, I have my doubts, but I also have my hopes. Hopes and dreams, guys. All right, stay tuned. All right, so I got it together. And as I turn it like this, it will turn this guy. But you can see where the conflict is, right? Turning it this way will bring this side down, but then it anti-gears over here. But it still seems to work. It still seems to work. So these two, these two are gearing and these two are gearing. But these two are anti-gearing. If you kind of understand what I'm saying. I don't know if you can really see that that well. But I have to get it. I have to get them both spinning. I think it's because I have them in repulsion mode. I mean in attraction mode. And it's because they're, it's a static system. These two are connected. These two are connected. And so I think, one, if I put them all the same pole so they're in repulsion, it wouldn't really matter whether it was gearing or anti-gearing. But this seems to work. I mean, look it. I'm not touching that one. But then sometimes it doesn't work. When I get it going, it seems to... It'll keep going. And so the whole point, obviously, is to have magnets around here so I can spin this and then have magnets on the ends of these three for um, to turn this into a three-pole generator, if you will. Generator, generator, generator. I don't know, though. I'm starting to think about it. And I'm like, huh. Taking these off and turning them around are a real pain in the ass. 
Because putting them together was a real pain in the ass. And it's funny because, yeah, see, it'll, it'll work. Let me go ahead and just do it like this and see what happens. All right, stay tuned. All right, so this is what I'm thinking. And it seems to be okay. It doesn't seem to be interfering with these guys. Now I got to space it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I should have. Well, I, I don't, it doesn't have to be absolutely exact. I want it to be. So I'd have to get, yeah. Okay, because I don't want to take this thing apart because it was a bear to get it together. All right, let me bring you back. Stay tuned. All right, so here's the magnets that I was going to put on the outside here. Let me get this up. So they would go on like this. And I'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have eight all the way around in alternating poles. So my dual coil JL94 motor. But now that I'm looking at these, I'm thinking, mm, even though they're N42s, I, I mean N52s, I don't think they're going to be big enough to do what I want them to do to manage the... Oh, crap. Ah, yeah, I don't think they would be big enough. <clears throat> they look a little too small. I'm going to try it anyway. <sighs> yeah, let me try it. and I'll bring you guys back. Stay tuned. You know, I just noticed when putting these on, if I move this slowly... It catches, even though these are anti-gearing, which is crazy. Yeah, see, if I move it really fast, it doesn't work unless I give it a spin, unless I give it a helping spin. Learning new stuff all the time with this thing. But yeah, if I go slow, it works, which is not going to be good for my JL94 circuit. It wants... Magnus to pass it fast in order to catch. All right, let me get the rest of them on. We'll see. Stay tuned. All right, I finished putting the drive magnets on. And like I said, I'm moving it slow, and it's working really good moving it slow. Now I have to figure out how I'm going to mount the coils. I need one there and one there, but ideally I'd like it to be like on a level plane, one facing each other like that, not down like this, but more like this. But I don't think it really matters. But I got to figure out how I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to have to, um, I think I'm going to have to 3D print a couple of stands or coil holders. Yeah. All right. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so there seems to be some confusion over this beast. Um, so these two cones and these two cones are connected to each other. So these two cones are connected. These two cones are connected. So if I spin this, this will spin. So it's a... Um, it's a direct connection to each of the two Vs. All right, there's a bearing here, there's a bearing here, there's a bearing here, and a bearing here. These bearings on the outside are just for spacers because they just work as good as spacers. Um, I connected these because it was based on something I saw on YouTube about 15 years ago. This is what I'm trying to replicate. I don't remember exactly. I just remember I had a setup like this. It was much bigger. It was like, uh, three foot by three foot box. It was made out of wood. It had the four cones in it. I don't remember if they were connected to each other or if they were freewheeling. But, but yeah, so I'm trying to replicate that. I actually started to replicate it about 12 years ago, 13 years ago. 
before I was into 3D printing. And I had to go out and figure out how I was going to do the cone situation. And I went out and got, I think, some of those um, cones that you use for um, pouring stuff. Funnels, I guess you call them. And I was going to cut off the end and glue them together. But it just never took off. Because I wasn't, again, I saw the video maybe two or three times. It was like 15, 16 years ago. And so I don't remember all the dynamics of it. The, the magnets weren't set up like this. They were set up in a spiral configuration. But this guy seems to work for right now anyway. See, if I do it slowly, it catches it. These are all north. These are all south. I regret doing that. I think I should have made them all in repulsive mode, made them all north or made them all south. Or, as someone suggested, do each one north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south like that. Um, but this is the way I first have it set up. So the next time I do it, or once I reconfigure it, which I can because nothing is glued, everything is screwed. If it doesn't work out too well this way, which I think it will, um, I will try doing the repulsive. Well, I will, well I, actually, the first thing I'll try to do is disconnect each of the cones so that they spin independently. But now, but, oh, all right, so that tries to clear that up a little bit. So there is a stainless steel rod that goes through all the way through. There's a bearing here. One here, one here, one here. So there's eight bearings in total. Plus the spacer bearings. Yeah. So now I have the stands. I have to screw these down. I'm not sure if I... And the stands can rotate. So I can... I, I, I can either do it like this. Oh, I can't do it because this thing's in the way. Uh, uh, but they do rotate. So I could stand it up on its end. I'm going to try it like this first, see if that'll work. If not, I will rotate it. Let me see if I can rotate this one. No, I can't because of the, what you call it. I mean, I'll have to take it out to rotate it. I didn't think about that. It's a lot of things I don't think about when I'm building this crap, this stuff. What, what was hitting there? Yeah, see, once I get it going, it gets going. So hopefully that clears up some of the misconceptions of how this thing was built. I think I think um, somebody was saying I should put some kind of, make some kind of magnetic lev going on here, but I'm not really sure what they mean by that. I mean, I think I know what they mean. Anyway, let me get this thing hooked up, make sure that the spacing is correct. Yeah, there we go. Make sure the spacing is correct. And see if we can't get it going. All right? Stay tuned. All right, guys. So, as I feared, these magnets are not powerful enough to spin this thing by itself, let alone spin this and the other... Um, the other... Uh, cone. Whatever you want to call it. And, and I and I know this because I've done a lot of testing, and I know that my circuit is good. But because these magnets don't give off a lot of mag, a lot of flux, I guess you call it, the JL ninety four circuit gets it gets um activated, but it doesn't stay activated. Um, I'm going to try it with some different coils. The problem is, is that I should have printed this piece out more, which I may reprint this piece to be thicker or just print another piece that will attach to it. So I could um, get coils in a different position. Right now, the only th these coils aren't even in, in the position that they would normally be in. I put them in like this so I can test it, see if it's even working, and it's not. 
Um, here, let me show you really quick. See, it gets activated and then it stops. And it doesn't matter if I turn it up to 30 volts. Uh, I can try different coils, but again, the problem, the problem is, is the spacing. I need to have this out farther. What I may end up doing is getting a longer shaft, like I thought about before, and putting the coil out here. Or I'm sorry, putting the rotor out here. It'll also act like a flywheel, and I've got plenty of great rotors that could work out there. But unfortunately, this one's a bust for right now. What a bummer. I know it'll work. It's just a matter of me figuring it out. Because the gearing works. When I put the other one up there, it works fine. But I can't get this guy to run off of these little magnets. It just doesn't work. Now, maybe if... um. It didn't have all this weight to pull. It might work. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about this and figure it out. So for now, it's a bust. Ciao. All right. So it turns out I have some bigger magnets, but I also ordered a 450 millimeter shaft. And I know people are going to say what you need to do is disconnect these guys. And I will try that. At, at another time. I want to see if I can get this going first in this configuration. Probably it'll, it'll take the longer shaft. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to try the bigger magnets. What I need to do is print out. I've got these magnets from, from uh, this rotor. I think I actually have some bigger ones. I don't know if I have enough of them, though. But yeah, I'm going to try the bigger magnets on this setup like this and see if that'll work. If that'll work, then I can put the other cone on top and see if it'll work with that. If the bigger magnets don't work, then I'm going to have to wait till I get the other shaft. Or in the meantime, I can uncouple this because I know by itself that'll work. If, if it wasn't linked to this guy here. Yeah. So we'll see. All right, guys. Take care.